there we are and we are done with the first item let's see i do want to maybe give some time for other people to join in um, later to discuss some of the topics below uh, i think the first one standardizing artifact names um, that sounds like a, a general topic do we want to start with that one um sure um so uh, i mean we recently had a, a twitter thread around like build pack naming and like name spacing if you remember correctly like there was some thread where uh like people were confused whether the build packs required by the registry need to have a namespace or not um and I noticed that in the spec or anywhere else, we don't really mention like a standard way of naming. And even on the documentation, some of the build packs were previously named like com dot, like io dot build packs something, which are not namespaced. Uh, no, not namespaced in a way that's uh, that works with the registry. So let's say you were following that tutorial and you created like that has now been fixed but previously if you were following that tutorial until you did pack register you would not know that your build pack is actually not following some naming convention set by the registry and then we sort of now have these two kind of naming standards one is the reverse domain um, specification and the other one is like build packs where you have a namespace slash uh, the the name of the build pack um, which is sort of confusing. Like we, we have two different sort of ways of namespacing because essentially with the re reverse domain naming convention, you could still namespace in, in, in some way. Um, so um, it, it's just confusing to me that how stacks builders or like build packs should be named or like what, what should be the naming convention? Um, I guess for builders, it's sort of set because it has to be a OCI image. So it has to look like something that can be published to an OCI registry. But for something like stacks or like build packs, uh, should there be a convention and should we enforce it in the spec rather than a tool like pack when you do pack register? Cool. That that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. So so when we're talking about stacks, right? We're not talking about the like the image names for the images that compose a stack, right? We're talking about the stack ID. Yeah. Um, let's see. Like, I I definitely agree that there's some sort of confusion. Um, and I want to maybe like inject the context of like the historical conversation of what came to be the registry namespacing. And if I recall correctly, as part of that RFC, the discussion did come up about, you know, whether or not that namespacing concept should be enforced on the build pack ID level, right? On the build packs, uh, versus, as opposed to just being a registry specific um, format requirement. Um, and at that point in time, um, I think the decision was made for it to be just a registry specific, right? So um, I think, you know, to your point, like maybe like there, there's definitely some confusion that grew out of that. And maybe there's a disservice that's being done there. Uh, so there's that. I am curious though um, about the reverse domain. Um, ultimately, the way I see the spec currently formulated, it has like no, no enforcement of that that I could really recall, right? Like it doesn't care what you name it. And it's just the registry itself that says, oh, if you want to put it into the registry, then it has to follow this ID uh, structure or format, which includes name spacing. Does that uh, coincide with your understanding as well? Yeah. Cool. Let me see if I could pull up the, the thread on that for or the RFC for that. I don't know if anybody has any more, uh, again, historical context on why that decision was made. 
why the registry decision was made or why we chose when creating or enforcing that the registries have a certain build pack ID format, why we chose not to then include that as part of a restriction for the build pack ID in general, as opposed to just I think, the registry. I remember we just didn't, we also didn't want to invalidate the existing build packs that are out there. Um, like if you never work with a registry, uh, I think we didn't want to basically force people down a path. Um, but I think the assumption was kind of uh, going forward, most people probably ideally, if we're successful with the registry, like will want to put stuff into the registry and probably will um, kind of fall on the design. Um, and I think there was opportunities or opportunities potentially for platforms like PAC as tools to basically kind of nudge people in that direction potentially. Mm, the the only thing is that uh, I, I still think it's valuable to have like some convention like for example Python has like web eight which includes some naming conventions which are not enforced uh, but there's still a good guideline for new users so they like it's not necessary for them to follow it but it it's still like sort of makes sense to everyone else, like what they should do. Uh, so that I guess later on, if we do decide to make some changes, at least we'll know that most of the people have been following this back and sorry, this, this guideline and we can at least assume something rather than nothing. And, I'm, I'm for, I mean, I'm for having guidelines there. Um, uh, I think initially we just didn't want it in the spec uh, per se to say like, you're now build pack is now an invalid build pack just on name. Um, I don't know if the guidelines would go in the spec per se, but um, I think something like the pet from Python makes sense. Yeah, so, so I definitely can think of, right, like um, one of the cases where, let's say, for instance, if I'm not publishing or I have no intent to publish into the registry, right, why is that format being uh, enforced in that particular sense? I think that would be like the, the initial pushback for something like that. Right. Oh, I think Sam's comment is that they're guidelines, right? And not necessarily requirements or enforced, right? But uh, the benefit of a guideline is that it means most people probably will follow the guideline and it will take that shape. Um, even if uh, at the kind of life cycle or uh, kind of spec level, like we won't invest, we won't like refuse to run your build pack because it doesn't follow the guideline, right? But instead, we just have documentation that uh, more or less the community agrees and stands behind, like, this is how we do X, Y, or Z. And I, I can see that applying to even more than just naming, right? Like, uh, in, in the future, too. Yeah. I, I mean, in general, there are, I guess, things which are not enforced by the life cycle or a platform or a spec, but you still don't want users to do to, to prevent them from like a foot gun or something like that. Like, you know, some things work with, with the API, but you're likely to do it incorrectly or have, cause problems for yourself in the future if you do certain things. Um, so like another thing that we talked about yesterday, oh sorry, in the last meeting was that build packs could technically modify each other's layers that's currently allowed, but you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, so I, I guess 
there is the spec and there is like some set of guidelines which are good to follow um which may not be enforced but they're there just to help you not do mis like not commit mistakes or uh put yourself in a hole in the future or something like that Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, do we have any idea on where these guidelines would live? Learning team somewhere would be my default response. Because uh, I feel like you do want them separate from the spec, right? Yeah, yeah sorry, what did, what did you say that they should go? Uh, somewhere where the learning team decides is best. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you. We'll, we'll have them recorded in this video, right? And uh, you just point them to this point in time in the YouTube where we say that that's a guideline. Um, just kidding. Um, cool. All right. I'll, I'll definitely add some notes about that in the meeting notes. So I guess we're talking about guidelines and we, we've talked about just one very specific guideline, right? Which is if you're creating a build pack, you, we want the build pack ID to essentially have a namespace as kind of the, the best practice. Um, are there other guidelines that we want to like throw in on the first phase? Because that seems like just one, you know, a one-liner. Should the process of creating guidelines be an RFC so that others can pitch in like what should go in there or like how we should organize this? Uh, and what should be the process of adding new guidelines in the future? Sure. Uh, I think that's fine. Um, I do think potentially that potent even fits under like a sub team RFC that probably belongs under learning that doesn't necessarily need votes from everyone in the core team, but that's my opinion on that. Sounds good. Yep, I've recorded that. Yeah, I think that'd be an awesome idea. Um, there's probably some, like, I think overall this would uh, definitely clean up some of the inconsistencies that you were mentioning, Sam, um, within various uh, repositories, right? Like samples, the docs, and just what we see out in production. Cool, anything else on this topic? All right, uh, moving on to alternatives for process environment variables. Um, yeah, this also came out of like a, con a conversation on a pull request with the Paquito folks um, that, let me just pull up the pull request actually. Um, Uh, so this was the pull request, um, and the like, essentially the issue that was there with the Piquito maintainers was that um, in order to set environment variables for a process, which like currently you can define a process without associating it to a layer, but if you want to set environment variables for it, you have to create a specific layer for it, which like semantically a process may, like you could have processes that are not associated with one specific layer. So now you have to create a layer just for that process and its environment variables. Um, and the alternative that we were thinking of was just to include it in the launch TAML and uh, launch TOML under the process uh, key and just follow like the 
uh, with the uh, environment dir uh, sort of format where you have the name and dot append or dot delim and the values. Uh, but I guess the downside is that we now have a fourth way of specifying <laughs> environment variables. Uh, but essentially, the, the issue was that currently it's a bit clumsy to specify processes, but uh, in, in the launch terminal, but not there in it, for their environment variables to create like a layer or associate those things with a specific layer. Um, it's I don't think it's about like not the inability to do something. It's just that it looks it it is a bit clumsy in, in the way how it's currently done. Um, I'm going to lean a little bit on the implementations team uh, for this discussion um, because I definitely see where you're coming from. I just don't know that I have any strong opinions contradicting that possible solution. I was reading the PR at the same time that you were having the conversation. So I'm sorry, do you mind restating what is the the proposal? Um, the, the proposal is just to decouple uh, setting environment variables for a specific process from a specific layer. So currently processes are not tied to a layer, like the definition is not tied to a layer, but setting environment layers, uh, sorry, setting environment variables for them is. Does that make sense? Like you, you want to add environment variables and you have to put them into a layer, right? Uh, but if you want to just set process types, you just set them elsewhere in a global single file. It makes sense. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see an RFC that goes over this um, in details, because I think there will be some, with the whole process overriding and things like that, it gets a bit complicated because if you do put them in like a process launch toggle, like I'm not sure what that's going to look like when further build backs can, you know, contribute and modify the the, uh, the process. But I think I think it makes sense to explore. Yeah, I feel like this came up in the original spec design. I feel like I actually raised this issue, uh, but I think the workaround of uh, just creating a layer uh, to do it was fine at the time. Just like write a layer that's specific to doing that for the process for now. Um, and then we kind of, I think, never kind of moved back around on it. I think some of the, I think I remember some of that discussion. It's because now you sort of have to decide whether you're going to re implement, like override and append and things like that yeah. in another format that's not file based. And so, it makes things, you know, it's just another way of doing invars. And at the time it was blocking process specific invars just as a, you know, implementation at all. So it makes sense. I'm adding some notes about this real quick. Um, so yeah, I, I think we're all on the same page, right? Like it makes a lot of sense to add it, but there's a couple things that we need to iron out. Um, and most of that would probably be things that we'd wanna discuss through an RFC process, just so that we make sure that uh, we think of everything like presidents and implementation details. Um, I think Sam mentioned the idea of having an MVAR uh, directory globally. Um, as opposed to putting them in the in the file itself, um, so I think that would still keep it in line with the file base, you know, format that we currently have. Um, so I think that might resolve that. But again, during the RFC, an RFC would be a lot easier to consume. And and sort of continuing the conversation from yesterday, where you have like a top level layers directory. Now, if you have an environment an environment directory, that would conflict with a layer called environment. So 
this was sort of a continuation of a conversation yesterday where it would make sense to move layers to a subfolder and have like the top level namespace for like global metadata files or other global settings. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, anything else to discuss here? Uh, Sam, I mean, do you feel comfortable with with the answer that basically an RFC would be best for this? Yeah. Cool. I, sorry, I, I, I probably missed it, but the, the like, I guess, pain point here, is it the, I guess, the mismatch in the concept of a process not providing a layer and yet requiring a layer to specify its environment or is there some other like deeper or troubling i guess i don't know i just can't understand uh, what uh, the impact as i said like the, there's no like uh there's no issue with creating a layer uh, for for setting environment variables, I don't I don't think that would cause any issues. It's just um, like semantically, processes are not currently associated with a layer. Some properties of them are. So that that was the only thing. Uh, it's got it's got nothing to do with what can or cannot be done. That's helpful, thank you. I don't feel too strongly about this, but I was just curious what others thought on like, this particular issue. Cool. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And you know, I think um, maybe like a lot of things, depending on how much desire there really is for this sort of change, um, yeah. depends on whether, you know, whatever individual, I guess, cares for it deeply uh, to create the RFC and then start those kind of conversations to make those changes. Um, but to, you know, as you mentioned, there's no actual limitation, right? It's just, to use your words, clunky, and I totally agree with that. Cool. All right. Uh, if there's mm -hmm. nothing else there, uh, we can move on to the next item, caching oh. interplay with materials yeah so i was just gonna add one thing to that last bit which is um haven't really thought this through all the way but rebuilds with a bunch of build packs that modify like one directory where you restore like i think having a layer gives you the ability to restore some like previous state but that if everything is modifying this one place where all the environment variables are. I'm wondering if there might be some inconsistencies that come up, or you're just going to have to require every build pack to run every single time. All right. We currently launch the terminal is also ephemeral, right? So each time something has to contribute a process, it has to do it each time, right? Unless I'm uh, like misunderstanding that works. So when you're contributing the process, whatever thing is doing that would also contribute to its environment variables, I guess. Yeah, okay. All right. Seems the I mean it it could be a directory or it could just be like a a, a key in, uh, inside the process like list inside launch normal, like either way, but um, just, just a thought. Okay. Cool, good call out. Glad we that was discussed. All right, good to move on. Yeah. All right, uh, caching interplay with bill of materials. This 
this is sort of the opposite problem. So since bill of materials are part of the launch problem, which are not restored um, between different builds, uh, what, what happens is, let's say you have a layer that contributes, let's say, Ruby gems or like fit packages. And now you want to generate a bill of materials containing all of the fit packages and gems that were installed. You have to essentially recreate or rerun this process of querying the installed like packages and generating a bill of materials for them each time. Um, and typically like there, there are, I guess, um, I mean, I guess typically you would have a bill of materials being generated in, with with a layer, like you're you're contributing some dependency that dependency would go in a layer, and the idea here is that like if you restore that layer from a cache, you should also be restoring its bill of materials alongside that were generated with it. So the idea here was whether we could move the bill of materials to the layer or toml so that when it's restored, it also restores the bill of materials attached to it. Um, which, I mean, I think that makes more sense than it being ephemeral and being just in the launch toml, which has to be recreated each time and regenerated from the existing layer. I don't think we have heavy users of bill materials on the Heroku side yet, but uh, that makes sense to me. But I could also see, I guess it's just a problem for existing build packs. Um, if they don't store whatever they're gonna put in build materials in the layer, like we, we quite often put things in the, you know, the build pack uh, layer cache so that we can read it back. And so I don't think it would be too much of a stress to read it back from the restored layer to, and then just, you know, give it to the launch toggle. But, uh, but not having to do that sounds good too, so. Yeah, because currently that's what I end up having to do. Like I either have to persist it as some like file or in the layer toml or store toml and then put it again in the launch toml, which like, I mean, I, I guess it's a no op, but it's still code that you have to write. If the custom code you have to write for each, each build pack, so. And this also caught me the, the first time I was writing it, like, uh, like bill of materials suddenly disappeared after the second one. And I was like wondering why. And then I went back and saw that, okay, <laughs> launch toml is not restored. And so, so the bill of materials is also not restored. How, how is that going to work for, um layers that are reused from the previous image. So that was what I was thinking, like if, if you're generating a bill of materials associated with a layer, you, you put it in that specific layers, layer metadata toml, and if that layer is restored, the bill of materials is restored alongside it. But if, um... Oh gosh, my mind, it's not working fast enough. <laughs> I'm thinking. Um, the exporter will sometimes, you know, see that a layer is unchanged from the previous image and it just will use that layer without like streaming it from the registry or unpacking it, right? So how would, would that be an extra step in order to construct the bomb? So, Mm. 
All the brain's working right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do we always restore the layer tunnel? I, yeah, I think so because otherwise, how? Yeah, I think that, that's what I was thinking. Layer tunnel, right. Yeah. So if it's yeah, in yeah. the layer tunnel, then yeah. it will automatically have it. Yeah. 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 The analyzer does restore the layer tunnel. Yes. So then you should have that list if you persisted in in a layer. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to launch. And so then you could still construct your, your, I guess, fully composed bomb. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of reading everything for the launch tunnel, you'll read everything from each layer's layer tunnel to generate the bomb. Right. And then since we always restore layer tunnels um, in the cache scenario, we should still be able to spin through them just like we do today. This is now. Um, I feel like running up against our the the feature that we just merged, right? Which is that build packs must explicitly opt into layer reuse, right? So we're like restoring that layer tumble with all of the build launch and cache flex that's false, right? It would be weird if that layer tumble was restored with. Well, maybe not. I don't know. It was like everything falls, but then here's bomb stuff that you either have to you know, modify it, right? you still have layer metadata stored there right so when you're doing caching you store arbitrary metadata there i guess this is just yet another arbitrary metadata you're storing alongside that. sorry i'm late Judging from context, this is this about like how you recreate the bomb when you're reusing layers? Yeah. I know on the Java build pack side, we just stick everything we would need to do that into the layer metadata. Sometimes exactly as we would put it into the bomb, sometimes yeah, that's, not. That's, like we could recreate it from the data in there. That, that's exactly what I was mentioning that like, you have to do that for every build pack. Then. Shouldn't that just be in the spec? We have a, a quick summary, hopefully good enough notes in the document about uh, some of the discussions. But uh, this last topic is essentially uh, moving the bomb from being in the launch tunnel into the layers directory. Or yeah, into the, into the layer tunnel. Yeah. I could definitely see that um, being useful. I think we still need a bomb in launch toml because you can add things to the bomb to describe contents of the after. Like you're not only describing layers necessarily. Yeah. I mean, we, we could have the bomb being composed of both of those things. Okay? So you could compose it from um, the, the build pack level or the layer level. And this would also be useful because currently, like you can also, apart from figuring out which build pack it, it came from, you can also then figure out which layer that bill of materials came from. Um, yeah, our build packs want that information. So we put it in manually, but it'd be nice if it just came because it was in, yeah. in that file, right? I do think we can't necessarily um, merge it with the metadata. Like there may be things you want in metadata that you don't want in the bomb or you want them in different formats, but I could definitely see it being in that file. Yeah. Um, I feel like the one note of caution would be on editing. Like if you have a cache layer and then the build pack is editing it, it would need to know, like it already knows to change the metadata. So I guess this isn't really that different, but it would have to know to change the bomb. And if it didn't do that, you would get old entries. I think the biggest reason to do this is what Sam was saying earlier. Like the very first time you 
create any entries in the bomb. The very next build, they're all gone, um, unless you're just unless you just know to always do that. Um, I mean, this, I, I, I think this is a sensible suggestion, but I'm, I'm wondering, you know, we've kind of started the meeting talking about guidelines. Like, is this something that could also maybe be solved by, with like, I don't know, best practices? The problem with this one is that it sounds like it's more effort, yeah. right? to have to do this additional uh, work just so that it works as you would expect it, right? I think that's that's the difference between a guideline, something that you know, no, but not everybody has to adhere to, and then like functionality, right? Because there's a lot of stuff that you know functionally we could have not included in in the lifecycle or you know overall build packs, but we've done so to make people's lives easier. All right, any other thoughts on that? Cool, so it sounds like, I know Emily, you relate to this, but I wanna make sure there's no like opposition to this, uh, very similarly to anything that changes the spec, this would require an RFC to have fully fleshed out thoughts. Cool, awesome. Sam, does that satisfy the topic? I assume silence means yes. Sorry? I was saying, are we good uh, with this topic? Yes. yes. All right. All right, cool. Um, moving on to uh, process for changing uh, lib C and B design. Um, yeah, this was like just so I, I've been using lib C and B to create, uh, like along with the path to create some, some build packs. And, there are some things I noticed which are a bit clunky about it. So um, one thing that is like particularly opinionated about it is the fact that each layer is a, like, like the layers output of a build result is a contributor that, uh, that has a very specific interface and you can't modify things like labels, et cetera, as part of a contribution process, because those are like, like slice values and like, they're like values and you can't change them as part of the contribution process unless I'm misunderstanding something. And the only thing I could change with the contributor was the bomb. So everything else have to do it in the build, like the Lipsy and the build, but then, that returns a build result immediately, whereas the contributors are run later on. And then at the end, like things like uh, other things are said. So that. <laughs> that oh yeah, that, you're <laughs> uh, bringing up a topic that has been a long battle that I was fighting with Ben over the years. But I thought that interface was a little bit awkward. How some things you can't control during the build process. Um, like in the build function. Yes. Some of them you can only control in a function that you return. And then I feel like the uh, the interfaces get wonky because because things like bomb or a pointer and sometimes yeah. based on the, um, the content of your function, you wanna change the bomb and you can, and we do, cause we have to, but the only reason that works involves knowing how libcmb is implemented and that it won't write the bomb until you're done contributing it's, it's just kind of bad i agree with you um so like essentially because of that i have to do like things like make a contributor that that's a struct that has a bomb bomb pointer and then when i later do the contribute i access the bombs with that pointer and then update it and then it, it essentially works because 
you now have to know the details of how the build process inside libcnp works and which steps it's taking so you're not even sure if modifying that would is is whether that bomb is being modified at the right time it could have been like exported before contribute was called and then you suddenly don't have the bomb modifications anymore and then like you sort of break the entire encapsulation of of the build or, or the build process so I, I think you're 100 percent right uh it's been a giant rant i went on like almost word for word like two months ago <laughs> is there is there an issue for your rant emily or is this just you hanging out with ben and having words with him um this was a private rant at the time uh lib cnb has not always followed the processes of the project in a lot of ways like we've not treated it like a first class citizen um i'd like to get to a point where we do and rather than just been changing it at will or now me changing it at will because i need to and we don't have the processes around it i'd like to make libcmb more of a something we can promote in the project and have processes around. Um, haven't gotten there yet though. So essentially when I, when I started, I had the choice of libcmb plus libpack versus packet. And the reason I went with libcmb and libpack was because they followed the latest build pack spec and I needed the bomb stuff for my build packs. And then it contributed like libpack Oh, sorry, packet doesn't make these assumptions, and like it, it has, I think, a, a bit saner API around like the the, the 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 minute details I just described. But it also doesn't keep up with the API, which is yeah. is a deal breaker for me. So that like if if the spec is changing, I would assume that something like libcmb, which is the reference implementation. Uh, is able to keep up with the spec. <laughs> so I agree with you. Opinion, on the readme, it says libcmb is a non-opinionated implementation of the <laughs> API bindings when it is in fact very opinionated uh, around how it does things. I've had some of these conversations with the Paqueta team, like my dream, which I haven't had time to make progress on is to basically have replaced libcmb with something that looks like packet but is up to date with the spec that that would be amazing um the the other thing that i feel missing from the libpack plus libcmb combo is occam <laughs> currently i'm using uh both of those with talking which means that even though i'm not using packet directly i am dependent on it through occam Mm -hmm. because of like I, I don't think that pack has a way of integration testing build packs like having some nice wrappers around pack and docker um again like this this does not involve the packs organization and it's going more into like the keto but it would be nice to have like a testing library that complements libcmd that uses pack and docker is is packet the paquetto CMB lib? It's yeah. a combination of lib pack plus lib CMB for, for Paquita. Paquita uses two different models because it's been maintained historically by two different teams who uh, couldn't quite agree on what to do. Uh, but what makes that hard is that things aren't standardized and also both models were right about different things. Like it is important to keep up to date with the spec and expose functionality, even if it's not needed by a specific Paquetto build pack. Like if you're producing this as a library that should be reusable. Um, also, I think Paquetto was, and Packet was right not to do the contributor or function interface and everything should just happen in the build. Um, I would love to marry these things. It is a lot of work, though. Um, I personally don't know when I'd be able to get around to it. 
um, but if we can enlist help from other interested parties. I would be happy to help out there. Yeah. yeah. Because they can, I'm actively using this, so it, <laughs> it does impact me when, when things like don't work with Lipsy and B when I, when I want to implement this specific thing. So what are some like, uh, you know, very tangible next steps? Because I know we talked about like the, just like this pipe dream, right? Uh, pie in the sky, like uh, of a complete, almost complete refactor. Um, and then there's the very, what seems imminent about, uh, you know, maintenance and process for Libs CMB. I can throw out what I think sane next steps would be, but it's making a lot of assumptions about what other people are willing to do. So take it with a grain of salt. I think it makes sense to work with the Paqueta team to fill in the gaps in packet and then like maybe donate it and replace LibCMB. Or like the other way we could do it is basically duplicate it if the Paqueta team does not want to have to work through the project to make changes to packet, right? I don't want to volunteer to donate something on their behalf. They might not be right. donating. And then another major player in this would be Ben. I don't know how he would feel about that. Maybe not great. Yeah, I know in the past, um, LibCMB was supposed to be, right? I, I know we kind of threw a little bit of uh, salt on the non-opinionated term, but it was supposed to be non-opinionated where I think the that term might be uh, thought of very differently by different individuals. I would say packet and libcmb are both not opinionated in terms of what you should do in your build pack. Um, libcmb has a little bit of a awkward interface, but I wouldn't call that an opinion. It's just a little, little awkward. Uh, lib pack is sort of an extension that's compatible with libcmb that is a bit more opinionated about, you know, here's how you log the title of your build pack. So it looks like the other ones, here are the rules we're going to apply when deciding whether to reuse a layer or not. So that is opinionated. Um, and I think we should start by norming on the non-opinionated part and making it less awkward. And then we could talk about whether we wanted to make any of those opinions something that people could opt into. I would never want to force it on users of the language bindings, but like maybe some of those opinions are generic enough that it'd be nice to have them as utilities that you could opt into. So um, I missed one of the next steps. Uh, the alternative you said to take what they have, right? Do, do you mean in the sense of cloning or essentially restructuring libcmb, starting fresh with the libcmb repo? Um, I don't totally understand the uh, You the said we could have the Picado team uh, donate, right? Or talk to them to see whether they'd be willing to donate a uh, packet to the build packs IO project, or alternatively, we you said we could take, and I'm trying to I'm saying we could redesign libcmb heavily inspired by packet without All asking right, them to donate it. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, I think the only real thing that needs to change is like the build or go in build packs or like build stuff related to build essentially like build and layers and stuff i think the layer contributor thing right yeah, yeah exactly that's yeah. probably the only thing that needs to change everything else is fine with libcmb with packet i think you also get a lot of other things like it's also opinionated about like how you should package your build packs they have like a different cli tool which libcmb like currently doesn't you just create a binary and then it's up to you to package it however you want 
Um, yeah, LibPack has something similar, but I think the difference between Packet and LibCMB plus LibPack is that, you know, Packet is a Paquetto project thing. So they're more willing to put some generic Paquetto opinions that aren't straight up CMB bindings in there. So to me, it sounds like the alternative is more tangible, at least immediately, right? Like uh, essentially trying to redesign libcmb, uh, we would only need kind of buy-in from Ben, right? As like the original maintainer. Um, and then to kind of incorporate some of the processes that we've used for other repos, um, those two seem very tangible and very short-term. Like, is there a reason why we wouldn't want to go that, that route? Now you say it out loud. I think that probably is the better route. Instead of trying to force the hand of Paquetto, Paquetto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Selfishly, I would love it if they used the same library instead of having two slightly different things. Well, if um, we do good we enough. But if we change some of these things, then they might be tempted, right? Exactly. Yeah. So maybe we did a disservice by not servicing them as well. I think the other thing that's a bit awkward about libcmb is that it's technically part of the implementation sub theme, but I don't think we really act like it is. I wonder if it needs its own sub team that's focused on build pack authoring experience. Like I don't think it actually sits nicely with lifecycle you know, in a box. I, I would be plus one that, but having, I don't know if we have a good team for kind of doing that right now, structurally. Terrence volunteers as the first uh, <laughs> maintainer. Sounds good. It's going to exit all and make libcmb Rust a thing. I mean, I already have a libcmb Rust, so, but it is not part of the CMB project. It, yeah, that's, that's another thing that I'm interested in, which is like alternative language bindings for um, CMB API, like I think, like we we do a lot of like we we encourage a lot of bash scripting and and the documentation as well as like other things and and the other scripting language that I can think of, which is used often is Python. Although it doesn't have a nice way of packaging things, I can still imagine it would be useful to have language bindings. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we did the bash stuff only because of some of the user study feedback. And it's generally, at least on non-Windows stuff, uh, kind of generally assumed that there will be some bash. I mean, it's not always true, but that bash will be there on the kind of stack image that you're running, at least the build stack image that you're running it on. Um, I think you can make a similar argument for Python but probably the difficulty is going to be around uh, if you are pulling in dependencies, because then it's not just what's on the stack image, like you're saying, right? Thanks. But Python is definitely like around uh, on Linux distros for sure. Cool. So it sounds, it looks like we're getting really close to our time. Um, this has been really insightful and I think we came up with a lot of really good stuff. Um, there, there are a couple of things, you know, that we can do. There's nobody assigned to it. Um, I don't know if we want to do that here, but uh, if not, you know, please feel free to take some of those items. I can take the item of talking to Ben. Talk to Ben. Got it. Can you also add like the test utilities or library to the libcmb part? That is also something I would find extremely useful. Like the Occam stuff. I've never used any of that stuff, so I don't feel totally qualified to talk about it. Um, but I can, I can look into it. I found it extremely convenient to use that for integration testing.
All right, anything else? Any parting words? All right, see you all online. Thank you all.